Um, first, we're going to talk about workshop five. That is week seven, I think. Um, let me bring. Uh, kind of quickly explain how it works. Again, it's identical to what we have done in class. Uh, do the exact same thing as I asked you before. Please uh, uh, first read the uh, notes that I have about structures uh, at home, understand how it works, then start doing the, the workshop. When the workshop is done, if it didn't work, then close down your workshop, open up the notes, go through it again, back and forth. Do not compare them side by side unless you tried this five times and you couldn't f fix your problem. Okay? That's the key to learn. So, uh, with workshop five, what we are essentially doing, we are removing the parallel arrays from workshop four. So, we don't have parallel arrays anymore. Instead, so instead of having series of parallel arrays to keep track of records one by one, like A0, B0, C0, D0, and keep going like that. We package everything in one structure, and we're going to have an array of structures instead. So we're going to have one array of structures instead of having several parallel arrays to deal with the records of certain entity. Okay? So again, in parallel arrays, how we implemented it, all the records that we had for each record, we created an equal length error, uh, uh, equal length array, and then we treated the zero, uh, the element number zero of all the arrays as record number one, then element one of all the arrays as record number two, and then we kept going like that. It becomes confusing and calling a function, passing the function. I, I, on purpose for your workshop, I put two of them. But imagine if you had 50 records inside, 50 records, 50, 50 items inside the record. Then you had to have an, a parallel array of 50. Just calling a function to print that thing takes forever. 50 arguments doesn't make sense. For that, we package everything into a structure and we make a, a, an array of the structures that we have. So, the first thing that you're going to, so you're going to create a student structure inside your report.h. So the structure declaration definition goes into the uh, header file, report header file. So any function, any file including report.h will be aware, aware of what a student structure is. Therefore, the new custom type you created called student will be, can be used in any file you have. That's number one. So that's the first thing you do. Then you go to your utils module. We're going to have a foolproof data entry in workshop five. You know already we, how we have done it. It's, it is in the, uh, uh, lecture that we had last time. So what you do, you all you uh, uh, have the get int over there already. I think that does full proof entry, uh, and you have a get double. What you do, you're going to add a get float to it because the student mark over here is a float. Therefore, you add a get float function to your utils. That's number one, and number two, you're going to create the get line function. Why we are having a get line function? Because the structure for a student now actually contains a C string. Looking at the structure uh, member variables, members of the structure, we have a float mark that holds the mark of the student. We have int student number that holds the student number. And now we have an array of 31 character, something that we couldn't do before because you cannot create an array of an array. You can. It becomes a two-dimensional array. Too crazy. We don't want to do it. So like this, we put the array inside the structure, and we forget there is an array inside this structure, and we can simply create an array of structures, and the names come with it. And that becomes a C string. Remember, in your reflection, you have one question. It's not like always. So the reflection of the workshop actually has uh, a question in it. You are to explain. What is a C string and how it is different with a character array? You have to explain that in your reflection. 
Okay? So it tells you exactly what we want. We want get int, and it says exactly how the get int works, what is the error message that it prints if it's not correct, and how it works. And get float works exactly like get int, except that it receives a proper floating point number from the console. And the error message is going to be bad real number, try again. And that's going to be your get flt that actually receives a float. Then you create a get line. What is the difference between get line and using scanf percent %s? The difference is that per scanf percent %s stops at any white space character, so you cannot enter John Doe. It will really only read John and then stops at space between John and Doe. When you do get line, get line goes right to the end where the enter key is hit, puts everything in the uh, scanf, and you know how, does it, how it does it with a square bracket, uh, caret, and backslash n2. Uh, we explained it in the, in the class. Just take a look at the notes of the class. It is already in there. And get line function receives as an argument a C string, but because C string is literally a character array, anything you do to C string over here changes the original value that is passed to it. Therefore, you can actually receive the string you're using the arguments of the array. Then you're going to do your report module. Report module has four functions in it. Report module has four, fun four functions in it. Function number one is called get student and receives only one thing. That one thing is a structure of student. That's the beauty about a structure. You can return one structure using return value of a function. And because stru structure contains all the details, all the details will be returned to it. So inside your utils, you will receive the name, then the student number, then the mark, and you receive a structure built out of those information out of the get student function. Now, the foolproof version test for it goes like this. John Doe is a string. Nobody can enter a string that is not a string. Anything you put is a string. You can put one, four, five, six, and it's a string. So whatever you put, it will accept it. So the name will be accepted. For a student number, if I put one, two, three, and I hit enter, it's not an integer. It's going to say bad integer entry. Try again. If I put one, two, three, and one, two, three, again, bad. If I put over here one, two, three, why it didn't put the space over there? OK. This, there is a space between. Let me just see if I can edit it. And I put a space over there because it's supposed to be a space in there. Am I logged in? No. Give me a second. It logged me out. Oh, shoot. Give me a second, please. Yeah. All right. Let me just edit this. Where was it? Oh. So in here, there is supposed to be a, a space over here. How do I write a space over? So I'm going to write over here sp space like that. Back to what it had before. So with uh, uh, Data entry, if you put one, two, three, one, three, and you put a space after what, and you hit enter, it will still not accept it because the one, two, three is coming with a character other than backslash and at the end. We have done this already in class, so follow the logic in that one. But if you put only one integer, then it will receive it. The same thing 
for floating point number. So everything is the same thing for floating point number, and that's that. That will be the foolproof test for this for the thing. You implement those functions in your get student instead of scanning the values you call the get line you call the get int you call the get float to receive the values you reuse your uh, information entry functions then the next function you will create will be a print student which essentially prints a student as follows 30 spaces for the for the name uh, a bar and a space and student number in 15 spaces this the rest is exactly like workshop 4 so and uh, six spaces with one digit after decimal point, right justify. The correct output for the, uh, for the uh, so the print report works exactly like the correct output. So print report over here shows exactly how a student is being printed. Uh, of the print report shows over here how it is printed. There you go. That's how it is. Okay, so the print report shows the name, student number, and mark, and shows everything properly. Maybe. It's a good idea to actually put that thing in there just in case. Get student. This one is print student. This is void print report. as follows so i'm going to put over here text okay So print report prints the thing as follows. So essentially it calls the print student over and over until the array is, reaches to the end of its size. But it adds up all the marks and prints the average at the end. <clears throat> exactly like workshop four. Read student information uh, uh, is essentially uh, going through uh, a structure array and reading them one by one from the entry using the get student function, and it goes through it exactly that way. So it prints a prompt saying enter number of students, like enter five students if num is five, and then it starts looping through this uh, student structure and uh, up to num, and one by one gets the students. Okay, and automatically it's gonna be a foolproof entry because get student is a foolproof entry. Unlike read student that receives a read write student array, get stu uh, uh, print not print student. What which one was it? Print report receives a constant structure student array because we know arrays can be modified from a function. We we put a const over there to guarantee that it's not going to get. Uh, uh, modified by mistake. And that's the whole thing about Workshop 5. Workshop 5 has uh, some entries that you have to put, so I put all the data entry over here. <clears throat> when you are logged into Matrix, you don't have to type these. Just copy and right-click on the window, and it pastes it over there. So you can just copy, right-click on the window, and poof, it prints it to guarantee that it's exactly the same. So first test it, make sure everything works properly, and if after that, you just follow exactly these. So uh, don't include the space. When I said space over here, it means one, two, three, and the space, okay? And here, 8.8 8, 8 and one space after, not two, not three, just one. And that's the test for it. And the files to be submitted are utils, report, main, and reflect.txt. That is going to have the explanation, as I mentioned over here for your reflection. First, explain what a C string is, and then explain what is the difference between a C string and a character array in C language. So you're gonna write that explanation for me, and that concludes your uh, workshop five, and it starts at the due date of workshop four. Again, you have three days to do it, okay? 
as I mentioned before, the solution and everything is already there. Just follow the instructions and you should be able to do it properly. Uh, the answer submission is already open, by the way, unlike the other one. You can submit it right now if you want. Mm. Not right now, actually. You can submit it right after the due date of the other one. So, you know how to test it using submitter without submitting? Dash feedback at the end. Okay, if you would dash feedback, it's a, it goes through all the stages of submission and tells you if it's submittable or not, but it won't submit at the end. So that dash feedback is really helpful. Questions about workshop uh, five? So the next day you are coming in, you're going to have a new workshop, workshop six. Not the next day, sorry. The next lab you are coming in, you're going to have workshop six. That's going to be on the topic that we are going to talk about today and the next day that you're coming in. Uh, any questions before we start our important session? Remember I told you be rested, have lots of coffee before you come in? All right. So, I'm logged off everywhere. Sign in again. No? Okay, so I don't have the information. Forget it. Later. Later, later, later. Okay. Let's come back over here. Now I'm going to prepare it and I start the lecture. Today is probably the only day, maybe or the next day too, just to review what I'm going to do today. I'll be using slides, okay? I usually don't use slides. But today to go through the concept, I'm using slides because I suck at drawing. So that thing is going to help, okay? So uh, that's what we're going to do. Let me just uh, prepare the things. Let me pause it when I'm, oh, before we begin, a quick review, a quick review of something that we learned before. We said in C language, in C language, we have a search and replace mechanism where you can search for a piece of thing in your code and replace it before compilation. Like, for example, I can have something like this. I can write, I can write, define uh, age as int. I can do that, right? Then I can write over here age a, and I'm going to say a is equal to 10, and I'm going to say printf. You are percent D years old. Let's make it capitalized so it looks look important. <laughs> okay? So when you write something like this, it looks like age is a type in here, right? Age A, and you say like that. Well, that's not the case. It's not going to be like that. What happens over here is that compiler, when you say define age, after that it looks for anything that is age. It removes it and puts an integer instead. So this is really an integer A. It searches and replaces it. So, so when, I, when I actually run this, from compiler's point of view, a is an integer, and it's 10. It's not an age. I can type this over here, hee haw, and I can write over here, A is a hee haw. It doesn't make any difference. It's going to search for all the hee haws before anything starts and replaces it with an int. Are we okay with this? So it's literally asking. So again, remember, anything that starts with a hashtag, you're 
Am I recording? Yeah, anything starting with a hashtag, you are telling to compiler what to do before it compiles your code and translates this to, to an executable, right? So hashtag, the first one says, hey, compiler, ignore the safety stuff with the scanf and don't give me that error thingy. That's that one. Number two, it says, go find stdio file in the compiler include directory copy it and paste it here before you go it literally does that so include standard input output it's not like magical things and bring a library in it literally copies and pastes everything is that you have in standard input output library so you have the prototype for printf so you can actually call the printf it literally brings all the prototypes that is written in C language and it's included in standard input output and brings it for you. And then you are saying, hey, before you compile, go through all the hee-haws and change it to an int. It will do it for you. And it will run it and it will work perfectly. So if I actually go like this, so if I, so if I run it, you will see that the outcome is going to be yeah, anyway, let me stop it and run it. You're 10 years old, right? That's what's going to say, and done. Now, I can have something like this too. I can even say over here int a and b. What does it mean? He a and b, it means I have an integer a and b. And let's say a c, right? Then I can say over here, define sum to be a plus b. Again, remember, no semicolon, nothing. I'm saying anywhere you see sum, add a plus b instead. So I can say over here, <clears throat> a is 10, b is 20. And I'll say printf, the numbers are percent percent D and percent D. And I'll put over here A and B, which is very fine. Not only that, not only that, I can say C is set to sum. And I'm going to say printf the sum is percent D and I'll go to new line, and I'll put over here C. So what I'm telling to the compiler is that change the hee to int, so A, B, C will be integers, right? Then I'm saying A is 10, B is 20, print the numbers. Then I'm going to say C is sum. Sum is replaced to A plus B at compile time. Okay, so at the end, it's going to print it out and come out. So it's going to actually print it that way. It's very simple search and replace. Are we okay with this? You have to be careful with this search and replace, though, because things like this may happen. So what is the sum multiplied by 2? What is the output of this program? Mathematicians? <laughs> what is the output of this program? 60, right? No, it's not 60. It's actually 50. I'll show you why. When I run the program, see what happens? That's a mistake. Why? Because we forgot that this is just a blind search and replace. Compiler will change the sum to A plus B, correct? When it says sum is changed to A plus B, what happens? We know multiplication comes first. So B will be multiplied by 2 becomes 40 plus is 10, right? So careful with the define. Yes. Put parentheses, yes, you'll be fine. That's why I said be careful, OK? So that's the, that's the bad sum. So I'm going to write over here, bad sum. <laughs> OK. 
Now in here I'm going to say, and sum is, that's a good sum, which means it guarantees that everything's good now. So now if I actually come over here and say, bad sum, the bad sum <laughs> multiplied by 2 is this, and now I can have over here C is sum multiplied by 2, and the sum multiplied by 2 is now 60. And the second one is correct. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any problem with this? Yes. No. Constant cannot use, that's the difference between const and constant, essentially you so <clears throat> if I had, it's an interesting question, if I had over here pi, if I had over here define pi, uh, If I had the number for pi over here, is that right? Yeah. So if I had the number for pi like this, probably it would be better to actually make it const double equals to that. Oh. Because it's a value. But I cannot say const in sum equals to a plus b. What is a plus b? There is no way, it, you cannot do plus. The plus should be in a function. You cannot do a plus in a, in, outside of any function. So that's not going to work out. That's where defined comes handy. This is where const makes more sense, OK? Because it's just a literal value. If you just put pi over there, that every place you have pi is going to change to a big number. You're going to have lots of literal values. Like this, you're going to have a non-changeable placeholder for pi, and that's going to be 3, 4, 5. So it's not going to recreate the literal value for it. You're going to have only one. So keep that in mind. So this is preferable. Not for us. It's going to be OP244. For now, we are, we are, we are, for now, we are doing this. So I'm not going to even mention that. For now, we are doing defines because we want to play with it and learn it. Are we OK? Any questions about define? Suggestions about define? Define. <laughs> what does define do? It searches a certain uh, string in your string. Is, it searches for a word inside your source code and changes it to something else before compilation. That's what defined statements do. Easy breezy. Are we OK? Yes. <laughs> OP244. Yeah. We are struggling with functions. I don't work, I'm not going to teach micros now. That's, if we have extra time at the end of the, sem end of the semester, I'm going to have, I have the exact same thing for OP244. That I, I put one extra session at the end of the semester and I make it voluntarily. So if anybody wants to come in, that's when I prepare you for OP244, when I'm going to teach you a few concepts of it. So I don't think even in 244 we have macros. I think it's in 345. But anyway, OK. But no, yeah. But define can be used to create macros. We don't know what macros are. Forget about it. Just backspace and delete it from your mind. Are we OK? If, I'm going to go through the notes, because quite frankly, I don't remember if we teach it in C or not. If we have it somewhere in notes, I'll teach it. I'm not 100% sure, because it's a tricky situation. For now, that's the extent of our knowledge. Search and replace, literally. Are we good? So now that we know that, so in here I'm going to say define review. So A is going to be define. Dot C, <coughs> and we're gonna go back 
to what we had before. Yes, sir. Yes. It's uh, it's n like this rarely. Rarely, as what my lady said over here, which is a macro. You'll see later on. The find can do a smart search, smart search and replace, which means you create a pattern and you ask it to convert whatever you put over here to a specific pattern. When you use the smart search and replace, it's used a lot, okay? But in our case, no. Rarely used this way, but that's just introduction. So that explains, hopefully, what we have. So let me remove that he ha shmi ha thingy, and now we can actually, what happened? Okay, safe. Now we can go back to our presentation. So what I want you to do now, I want you to, is everybody okay, are we? Uh, you're not tired or anything? Because I'm going to go and I want your, your, your every single brain cell of your brain to be dedicated to what I'm about to talk about now. Okay, so all the chatters and people, Snapchat people, get off your things and listen to me. This is a critical moment for the entire career of your C and C++, and I want your attention. Okay, you want to, anybody wants to go for a break? You have to pee or something? No, we're good? All right. So, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the memory of your computer. That in this diagram, I actually have an error. <laughs> I should have put a 124 cell in here. I didn't put it. So there should be a 24 added after this, and then comes to 25. So one byte is missing over here. I made a mistake. And every semester, I, I say, I'm going to fix it, but I forget, and I don't do it. So I bring it next, and I'll explain it the next day. So, there is supposed to be one extra thing in here <laughs> that is not, okay? Are we okay? Okay. So, <clears throat> what is the memory of your computer? The memory of your computer is essentially an array of bytes. And this is not a metaphor of any kind, literally. Your, the memory of your computer is an array of characters. It's not a string, it's an array of characters. And its index starts from zero, goes up to, money in your pocket, how much money you have to buy RAM, okay? <laughs> the more you have RAM, the bigger this index gets, okay? By the way, some of the things that I say over here are, are metaphors, but uh, the character array is not. It is literally that. The index of this array, so if you want, and by the way, you see that the number over here is, what, 23,423,100? Byte, <laughs> okay, that I reduced it to only 102. So when I say 102, I mean put this one at the beginning. So when I say byte number 106 is essentially index number 106 of that, of that array in your RAM. Do we understand this? That index, ladies and gentlemen, is called an address, okay? So when I say, what is the address in memory, what I mean is that what is the index of that byte in your real memory? If I start from the beginning of the memory and keep counting the bytes, how many I have to count until I get to yours? That's the address. If I am at the beginning, how many I have to count to get to it? Zero. That means I am at it. If I want to go to the first one, I have to count one, and then I am at it, right? That's what the addresses are. Are we okay with this? Anybody have any question about this? No question? Fantastic. We also need to appreciate the fact that anything you do 
anything you do, any program you write, any video you watch, any Snapchat you reply to, any, anything you do happens in memory. Anything you do. Anything you do, first it goes into memory as instructions and data. And the operating system tells to the CPU, hey, this is the address of the beginning of the instructions. Go do it. CPU knows zeros and ones. It goes over there and knows how to play that video for you. Knows how to run that game for you. Anything before it can happen, it has to get loaded from your hard drive and go to the memory of your computer. Do we understand this? Right? Okay. So we have two types of data that goes into memory. One, how to do things. The program you write for I equals to yada yada, the instructions you write. That's your code. Your code is goes to memory and sits, let's say, in address 106 and keeps going hundreds of bytes later. And when your program wants to run, operating system loads that, puts it over there, sees that it's in 106. It tells to CPU to go to address 106, start ready, reading, and do the instruction. That's when your program runs. That's the first type of data that goes into the computer. The second type of data is raw data. The data that you use to do process on. You say integer i is set to 10. So you are creating a variable called i and you put 10 in it. When you say integer i, that i goes somewhere in memory. And it's tagged as i. So when you say i is 10, it goes to that address of memory and 10 is written in it. That's what we are interested with, not the code. The code we don't want to deal with. That's too rich for our blood. We're going to take care of that one in OP345. Okay? Now, we are only dealing with raw data, not instructions. So what I'm saying is that when you actually write in your code in integer var, somewhere in memory, and a location is allocated for you called var, and the number of characters, the number of bytes allocated to that one is the equal to the size of the type. An integer requires four bytes. There are going to be four bytes over there. So what is the address of var in memory now? Why well, everybody's quiet? Where does it begin? 108, right? You're, uh, you're trying to read the whole thing. <laughs> is, is it uh, 23 billion? <laughs> no, that's why I made it three. So var starts at address 108. Do we understand that? Right? Do we care? No, because we have the name. The compiler actually tags it with a name, so I don't have to remember the address. That's why when I actually and it doesn't make any difference if I have a double somewhere else in memory where it can find eight contiguous bytes back to back, it puts it over there and makes it va, eva. Are we okay with this? And that's a double variable of mine. And I do not need to know that it's, it starts at address 132 and it occupies everything up to address 139. And I do not need to know that it starts from address 108 and occupies up, up to address 111. Do we understand this? At any moment, if you think I'm talking gobbledygook, stop me. If it takes 10 sessions to cover this, I'll continue and to go to the next semester and explain it to you. But we cannot skip this. Are we okay with this? All right. So if I say, var is 9765, the binary representation of this number will go and overwrite the entire four bytes of that integer over there. And if I say dvar is 
1876.5432, that value goes and occupies the eight bytes for the double and writes it. You don't need to care if it's at address 132. Compiler takes care of that. That's why we have a programming language not to care what that number is. But to know that it exists gives us power. So we can do crazy stuff with it. Are we OK? Now, if I wanted to put, now I'm going to come to you and I'm going to bring my microphone. Where's my microphone? Why are you looking at me? <laughs> You're the first victim. <laughs> So who volunteers to ask the next question? You are? OK. So if for some, somehow I could do magic and I could put an integer right, right adjacent to var, what would the address be? Uh, adjacent, you mean? Right beside var. 107 or taking up the same amount of space? Yeah, I'm putting another integer beside var. 112? Thank you. 112, correct? So it's got to be 112. And that 112 will go up to what address? 116? 115. 115. 16 is the next one that is starting, right? How did I know that? <clears throat> because I know an integer is four bytes, correct? So is it safe to say if I didn't show you this image over here and I told you var is sitting at address 108 and I am not showing you this picture and I'm going to say we're going to have an integer right after that, what address is going to be in? 108. Because I know size of an integer is 4, therefore it occupies 4 spaces, therefore 8 plus 4 is 12, therefore 112 is the next address. Are we okay with this? Okay. If I told you <clears throat> there's going to be a character right after var, what's going to be its address? 112. Still 112, right? Still 112. So that's what we need to understand. From the size of the type, I can predict what is the next address after that. Are we okay with this? Right? So we are just playing with addresses. Now, what I want you to do is to put your designer hat on, which means I want you to think or assume that we want to design the C language now together. Okay? I wanted to hold somebody's age. I needed to keep a number. We invented the type integer, correct? I wanted to hold number with partials, real numbers. We invented the types float and double, correct? We wanted to have five different types in something. We invented the structures, correct? Now, I want to invent, I want to invent a type that holds an address in it, so I can play with it. Address is a number, right? Address is a number. So if I want to do that, what do I do? I want to invent. I want to create something now. <clears throat> so going back to the integer var and dvar, let's say we, we name that thing a pointer. Because its job is to point, right? If I create a variable called pointer, and inside that, sorry, if I created a type called pointer, so when I say pointer, I mean integer. When I say pointer, it's like double. When I say pointer, it's like character. It's a type. So when I create a pointer, if I create a variable of type pointer, I can hold the address of other things in it. So essentially, when I say pointer PTR, it will be another variable in memory, correct? Its name is PTR. And believe me, size of a pointer, an integer is big enough for it to hold any size of memory that you want. And <clears throat> when, the, when it gets bigger, we can make it 8. Like 
anyone who has a 64-bit computer, size of a pointer is 8. We are assuming this is a 32-bit computer, the old one. So the size of the pointer is 4, because that's how big our RAM can get, OK? So essentially, the biggest number I can put in a pointer is the maximum index that I can have in my RAM. If the RAM gets bigger than that, my operating system ignores it. It becomes inaccessible. That's how I designed it. First of all, do my pointer need to hold negative values? No, because I never have a minus fifth number. It starts from zero and goes up, right? So the first thing in our design we need to understand about pointer, that the pointer must be positive only. Are we okay with that? Zero and positive. Good. So let's try it. So let's say I want to take the address of something and put it in pointer, in PTR. So if I put 102, for example, in PTR, that means PTR is supposed to point to 102, which means I need to fiddle with that part of memory. That's why I'm designing the pointer. Are we okay with this? So this is the purpose of our design. So when I put a number inside a pointer, that means I want to go in that part of the memory and, and hack it and write a virus, something. I don't know. Because it's just very low level, right? It's a C language created variable, so we don't have to deal with addresses, right? But I'm creating a pointer so I can deal with address if I want to. Are we OK with this? But that sucks. Like it's nowhere. What am I going to do with that? I need that to point to something that is valid, something like uh, 108. <laughs> so I can say now this pointer is pointing to var, right? Right? So what's your name, my, my lady? Amani. Amani. So I'm far that. When I'm pointing over there, I'm pointing at the lady. At the, sorry if I'm pointing at you. I'm just demonstrating a pointer. When I'm pointing at a lady, I am not a lady. I am pointing to a lady. And at the end, the man is sitting over there. And if I change now, I am pointing to a gentleman, right? Which becomes a little confusing, because you don't know if you say, my lady or my lord. You don't know which one to say, right? It becomes confusing. So keep that in mind. Pointer itself is not a variable. It's pointing to another variable to deal with it. Do we understand that? OK? So that sucks, because there is no way the whole idea of having a very variable, having a name, is to not to know what this address is, and my life is beautiful. So how can I know where something is? I'm going to invent another thing for it, because I need it. Let's say, let's say I can ask the compiler, what is address of var? If I could do that, then the statement would be PTR is equal to address of var, right? Right? If this address of var could extract the address of var, 108 would have gone into PTR. Is that clear to everyone? Right? Beautiful. And having something like that, let's say I can tell to the compiler, go to the target of PTR and put something in it. So I could say, Target of PTR is 2345. If I say target of PTR is 2345, what becomes 2345? The var, right? So when I do that, the var becomes a thing. Are we okay with this? So I'm creating something nice. So I created something I called it the pointer, right? I have an address of that extracts the address of anything I want. And I have a target of that tells the compiler, hey, I'm not dealing with the variable PTR. I am dealing with the target of PTR. Are we OK with that? Are we good? That's our, that's our pointer down. So let's test our pointer. OK? So, and because of this fact, if I print the variable, what's going to get printed is 2345. Are we OK with this? If I print target of PTR, Still 2345 will be printed, correct? Everybody's okay with that? If I printed PTR itself, what's gonna get printed? The address of where PTR is. Correct? Some positive number is gonna get printed. That's why I have percent u. You haven't seen percent u. Percent u means unsigned integer. 
an integer that doesn't have negative values. So percent %d prints negative and positive, percent %u prints only positive. So I'm writing percent %u over here, and I'm printing that one, so that's going to get printed. Are we okay with this? Now I want you to have a deep breath and digest this. Oh, do I have another thing over here? Yeah, that's it. Are we good? Read it again and let it sink in. That's why I said have coffee. By the way, this is water. <laughs> Good. <clears throat> now let's test it with other stuff. So if what, what I said is correct, if I say PTR is address of DVAR, then what's going to go into PTR? 132, because the doubles address is 132, correct? Do we all agree with this? Going through the same thing, if I say target of PTR is set to this, what should be overwritten? This one, correct? How? In here, I pointed to four bytes. My pointer didn't have any indication what is the target. Lady, gentleman. If you don't see what I'm pointing to, can you guess if the person is sitting at the end of my pointing is a, is a lady or a gentleman? Impossible to know. If somebody's at the door and just showing, seeing me pointing at something, and you ask that person without seeing the target, if you ask that person who's sitting at the end of that pointing, is it a lady or a gentleman? They have no idea because they don't see what I'm doing. Correct? That's why this design of mine sucks. It doesn't work. I need more information. I need to give compiler more information. This doesn't work. Instead, I need to tell to the compiler what type of pointer I have. I am only supposed to point at ladies in the room. So no matter what I do, the people that I'm pointing are ladies in the room. The, sorry, that went segmentation fault. <laughs> I went back there at the corner that nobody was there. So, so, so I have to point at you. So if I say, lady, that doesn't make sense, does it? And that's segmentation fault, by the way. Whenever you see that message, it means you're pointing to something that it's not there. Okay. But if I'm a gentleman pointer now, if I do something like this, all I'm pointing are gentlemen. You know that the target of my pointing will be gentlemen. It's the same thing over here. So instead of just saying PTR is a pointer, I'm going to say PTR is an integer pointer. So I add the type of what is being pointed to. And, and now when I actually set it, and when it wants to put the value, it knows that it has to override only four bytes because the type of the pointer is an integer. And the same thing over here. And everything goes fine. And the same thing if I say double pointer DPTR, then it creates a double pointer. And as you see, the size of a double pointer and the size of a pointer are the same. They're both address. The address doesn't change. The target ch changes. Do you understand what's going on here? So the types that I've said, pointer is pointer, it's just an address. As, you, as we asked, I said, what is the address of the next integer? It was 112. What is the address of next character? It was still 112. 112 is 112. It depends on what's sitting at the target. So when I say double pointer, I can actually do this. Now if I say DPTR is address of that one, DPTR can only hold the address of double. If I put over here var, compiler is going to tell me, what the hell are you doing? You told me it's a double. You're putting an address of an integer in it. It doesn't make sense. It's like I have a tequila shot and you want, I don't know, coffee in it. That doesn't make sense. You need a coffee cup for a coffee. 
And if you drink your tequila in a, in a coffee cup, then you're in trouble. You better go to some AA meetings. <laughs> so <laughs> what I mean is that, so, so you, you follow what I'm saying. It has to match its content, and that's what's happening over here. So now I can actually mention the target of this one is that one and go through the rest of the stuff. And when I say print DVAR, it prints that value. If I say print target of DPTR, the target's gonna get printed. But if I say print DPTR, I put percent %u still, because the address is just an address. Yes, sir. Because I didn't have this double thing yet at the beginning. My design was wrong. I only had a pointer. I changed my design, corrected it by saying that to the pointer, I have to add the type. Are we all OK with this? Are we all OK with this? Now, let's go back to our program. So in here, I'm going to say integer var set to nothing, OK? Then I'm going to say integer pointer. And I'm going to put over here P, T, R, set to address of what I'm putting? Var, correct? Now I can say target of P, T, R is set to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now I can say printf percent D, new line, and var. And when I compile and run it, what's going to get printed? One, two, three, four, five. Are we OK with this? OK? And if I actually print that, so if I save over here, printf percent %d and target of ptr, again, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five. And if I say printf percent u and ptr itself, I will have the address of where that thing is sitting. Are we OK with this, ladies and gentlemen? Do we understand what pointers are? OK? Are we OK with this? Yes, sir. Because you want to play with it. The compiler knows where the address is. Do you? You know what it means? You know what, the question is this. You want to write a program who wants to do something with my age. Your question is as, you already know what, what the age is. Why you are you creating a variable for it? Because I want to hold the age and do something with it. I'm just for memory. I'm again, answer. To my friend's question is that addresses are like integers. They need variables to be kept in. Don't give pointers extra credit. They are just variables. And you're holding a number in it. What is that number? Address of another variable. Why do I need to write an address of an envelope so it goes somewhere? When I say this goes to an apartment building, is the envelope smaller? When I say this goes to a government building because that's bigger? No. The address is always the same. I just want to deal with where this letter goes. So I need some variable to put the address in it so I can play with it. Now that playing comes later. First, we need to understand where to keep the addresses and how to write it. Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK down to this point? Are we OK? But there is a problem. C language is cryptic. They want to mess with our brains. That's why pointer is presented by an asterisk. So to actually write pointer, you have to put an asterisk, which means integer pointer PTR is integer asterisk PTR. Never call it integer asterisk. I'm going to kill you. 
when you see an asterisk after a type, together they mean that type pointer. Integer, pointer. Student, pointer. Double, pointer. Whatever, pointer. So if I want a double pointer, I have to change that to an asterisk. It's double pointer DPTR. OK? And yeah, and also, so, but, and always the asterisk should stick to the type. Remember that. OK? Next thing, address of is presented by ampersand. <laughs> you do it in scanf. Remember I told you when you write scanf, say address of, not, not scanf? Address of really means percent, OK? So instead of writing address of, remember, say what it means. When you see an ampersand, don't say ampersand. Say address of. Therefore, the syntax over here, the C syntax, becomes, becomes, becomes DPTR is address of DVAR. You see that? And target of, just to make the matter worse, is again represented by an asterisk. I'm going to tell you how to identify between the two. Okay? So target of is asterisk too, which means if I want to say target of DPTR, I put an asterisk beside it. And target of DPTR, you see that? And the, tar tip and the asterisk attaches to that one. And that's it. So now you have integer pointer PTR, double pointer DPTR. DPTR is set to address of DVAR. Target of DPTR is that. Print this. Print target of DPTR and print the DPTR. Everything remains the same. Do we understand this? We'll come to it. We'll come to it. Target of and pointer are both presented by asterisk. Big pain in the neck. How do we fix it? If asterisk comes after a type, it means pointer. Always. Integer, after you have an asterisk, it belongs to it, no matter where they write it. It means integer pointer. Asterisk comes after a, a, an employee. You have employee pointer. When I say employee, it means employee is a structure. Structure is a type. It doesn't make any difference. They're all the same. Asterisk comes after a car. It's a car pointer. Asterisk comes after a double. It's a double pointer. So you look at asterisk. If it comes after, if it comes after a type, you should call it pointer. If you call it, believe me, it sticks. Integer pointer, double pointer, employee pointer. And the size of all these things are four. It doesn't matter what sits at the end. Obviously, when you have a structure, if you want to see what goes after the structure, it's the size of the structure, which is essentially sum of all the stuff in a structure. If you have a float and an int and 31 characters, float is 4, 4 plus int 4 is 8, 8 plus 31 is 111, right? So you have 111 characters. That's where the next thing's going to sit, per se. Okay? Not totally accurate, but yeah. Are we OK? So that's that. If asterisk comes in front of a variable it, as a unary operator, like minus 5 plus b, not a, if it comes as a unary operator in front of a variable, that means target of, which means a is set to target of p. So if somebody writes something like this, you know that p is a pointer. For sure, it's impossible not to be. When you rough target of t is x, it means t is a pointer, and you are putting in its, tar in its target. And when I say a is b equal to multiply by target of c. So when you look at the asterisk, and it makes sense, you'll say, oh, good, that's multiplication. When the asterisk goes, ah! That means it's a pointer. It comes after int. What the hell is that? Okay? If it comes before a type, then it means it's target of. That's what it is. So essentially, to read this, E is equal to target of M multiplied by C multiplied by C. Does that make sense? So M is a pointer. 
C is the speed of light, and these two probably are constant values, by the way. <laughs> OK, are we OK with this? So that, ladies and gentlemen, is actually syntax of pointers. So how the heck did this thing work? How did I write pointer and the damn thing worked? Define target of to asterisk. Define address of to ampersand. Define pointer to asterisk. Ta da! That's the define statements I was talking about. Okay? So, and actually, I had, I had a friend, I always tell this at this moment, I had a friend back home. Back home, we had entrance exam of universities and like crazy competition thing going on. Like only few people could, like we had the four billion high school graduates and out of those things, four, four million high school, and out of those only 300,000 could go to, to university. So it was really intense. Um, so I had this friend, he got accepted in medical school. But then he quit first thing, his, his level in the entire country was one. So it was like the first person ever. He quit and went to computer science. And after learning C, he wrote a define a, a header file that when you included in your C program, you could write basic language in C. It would actually convert your C language, your basic language, at the time it wasn't visual basic, it used to be called basic. You could actually write basic language and it would compile, a C compiler would compile it for you. So it's that powerful, you can actually do that. So that's the reason for this. Do we understand what these pointer schmointers are? Okay, all right. Now, I think you deserve a break, okay? So let's go for a break and come back and I'm gonna show you some things that we can do with pointers that is pretty cool. And I have no idea why I closed my Visual Studio. Let me open it up again. Please remind me to continue after the pause. So as I was mentioning, instead of writing it like that, I can actually write, I should write actually integer pointer, PTR, and address of becomes, address of becomes what we, we call as ampersand, and target of becomes target of, and target of, and just a friend right now brought something for me and said, why when I print it like that, it, it's all weird. You see percent P for pointer? If I print it like that, this is what you're gonna see. The address, but in hexadecimal. So this in decimal, Base 10 is this. This in hexadecimal is that. Okay? I, we don't want, if I showed you this, you didn't, we wouldn't really relate to that one as a number. I want it to be a real number, tangible number, so we understand what it is. Okay? So this prints in hexadecimal. And that's why you get a warning in here. And it let me go through because it says non-integer pass by yada yada when integer is required to yada yada yada. You see that? It actually tells me, hey, you are, you are <clears throat> trying to print something that is not integer as an integer. So it's giving me a warning. In C++, that actually turns to an error because it's much more type strict. So to shut the computer up, I can simply say unsigned. Hey, shut up. I know. It's unsigned. <laughs> I cast it. So you can actually cast the number to an unsigned. The result is the same. It just removes the warning telling to the compiler, I know what I'm doing. Print it. Okay? Don't give me a warning. Are we okay down to this point? Now, what are the side effects of addresses? The side effect is that now you can, you can access much more variables other than one. When we use a function to do something and get some value out of it, we return, we know that functions in C are only capable of receiving many values and return one values. There is no exception to this, ladies and gentlemen. Functions in C return some values, many values, and return only one. 
Now the good thing is that the values we are passing to the functions, now they can be addresses. And we can use them to remotely change stuff. So for example, if I wanted to <clears throat> create a function that gets the mark and the student number in one function, I can write something like void get uh, mark and what is the other one? Mark and uh, student number, or oh, student number and mark. Get, get student number and mark. And in here, I can say integer pointer, point, pointer, integer pointer, MPTR, and for the other one, I can say uh, float pointer, FPTR. And in here, I have my utils. I can say target of, so I'm going to say printf, enter, enter student, uh, student number, and asking for a student number, and say over here, a target of uh, MPTR. Uh, oh, I said, why am I doing this? Integer MPTR is SPTR, student, uh, uh, student number. So target of SPTR is set to get int, and target of FPTR is set to get uh, float. And in here, I'm going to say printf enter the mark. So now, what I can do in my program is first this. I'm going to save this as real pointers. Syntax. <laughs> Sorry, because the other one is was the fake pointer. I just wanted to make sure that uh, this is the real pointer. So, so yeah, I was saying now what I can do over here to have uh, something like uh, um, float mark and uh, integer student number. Now I can say get student number and mark and put address of student number and address of mark in here. Exactly like how scanf works, right? So I'm, I'm telling to get student where the student number pointer is. So when get int puts it in target of SPTR, actually this is remotely putting it in here. When it's putting it in FPTR, it's actually remotely putting it in here. So it remotely changes. It doesn't return any value, but it remotely changes it. So because the address of information is passed to this function, this function can access variables outside of this scope. You follow what I'm saying? Does that make sense? So now in here, I can say printf mark is percent point one L, uh, F and I'm going to put the mark and I can say print of the student number is and I put percent D and I put the student number so that that's the very first benefit that we can take. And now we understand why we pass the address to scanf, but we pass the value to printf. Because printf doesn't want to change anything outside of its scope. It just wants to receive the value and print it. But scanf needs to fit it outside of the scope, read information, and put it in different places. So we pass the address to it. Very simple and straightforward. So. <clears throat> When I run this program, as you will see, it gives me error. What is the error? Unresolved symbol, 
What? Oh, I don't have a get float stuff in the thing, do I? In my, oh, I don't even have utils in here. Add existing items. I think in utils I only have double, right? I don't have the float thingy. Okay, so I'll put, I'll, I'll change that one from float to double. I'll, I'll make, I'll make this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it all. Search and replace. <laughs> Search it all to double. Okay. So, I assume this is a dialog box over there. All right. So, uh, so let's make this one DPTR. So we, I know it's a double pointer, and this one too. So now when I run the program, <clears throat> give me a break. What did I do? Oh. Oh, scanf. First of all, scanf. It says that's not line number. Oh, get float. It's get double. Yeah. <coughs> okay. So now when it runs, it comes over here. As you see, mark has mark has garbage in it, and this one has garbage in it. And how the function is called, we know how the functions. We know how the functions are called. Shoot. I hate these shortcuts that they create halfway. I cannot click anywhere in my. There you go. So the function, when the function is called, it's called like this. Get student number and mark. And we know that it's called as int pointer sptr set to address of stno and int pointer dptr set to, sorry, double. dptr set to address of uh, mark. So when the function is called like that, <coughs> sptr is getting initialized by the address of the student number, and dptr over here is initialized by the address of mark. Therefore, in the function, SPTR is an address that holds the garbage value. <laughs> so in here, if I had, in here, if I had, let's say, zero, and in here I had zero, two, if I had something like this, <clears throat> coming to this point, we'll show you this. When I come to this point, SPTR holds the address which is zero, and DPTR holds the address, which is 0, 0.00000. It shows actually the target of it when you are debugging on it. OK? And now in here, I'm going to get an integer and put it into target of SPTR. So therefore, when that happens in here, when I put uh, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and I hit Enter, the target of SPTR will be set to 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3 which this function has no idea what it is. It just knows an address came in, and it puts something in its target. And then when it asks for the get double, get double gets another value and puts it. So now the target of that address becomes that. However, when it goes back up, out because the addresses that were passed were addresses of actual variables in in main, the value of mark will become 99.34, and SDNO becomes 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, and therefore the values are changed, and we are going to have the values modified. Are we okay with this? Now, please go home and go through this in detail and understand what happens. When you come back, we're going to talk about pointers more, complete the whole thing, and we're going to be up to date with everything. Are we okay? All right. Questions before we go? All right. Have a beautiful day.